conditioning, conformity, deprivation, aggression, eyewitnesses' memories. These are just some of the things psychologists have studied through laboratory experiments. And here, we'll look at the key things you need to revise for a really good exam answer on experiments. And the first one is knowledge. Sure, it's okay to give a definition, but a much better way of gaining and showing understanding is to break the experiment down into aim, method, and environment. So the aim of experiments is to go beyond description and test causality. The method is to manipulate something called an independent variable to see if it brings about change in something else called a dependent variable. For example, a common way of trying to isolate the independent variable is by randomly dividing participants into an experimental and a control group, and then only apply the independent variable to the experimental group. And the laboratory is a closed environment, where the influence of other variables can, as far as possible, be kept constant. So a laboratory experiment is a test of the effect of one variable on another under closed conditions. And you'll also need some application to show understanding. So make sure you have some good examples of psychological experiments to illustrate your explanation. For example, in Bandura's Bobo doll experiments, the aim was to test the hypothesis that aggressive behavior can be learned. The independent variable was the adult model's behavior, manipulated to be aggressive or non-aggressive and the dependent variable was the children's subsequent behavior towards the doll. In Loftus and Palmer's famous experiment, the aim was to test the hypothesis that the wording of a question can influence eyewitnesses' memories. The independent variable was the wording of the question, and the dependent variable, the participant's estimation of the speed. And third, and really important, you'll need some good evaluation points. So what do laboratory experiments give researchers that other methods don't? The major strength of the laboratory experiment is that it's the only method that allows the researcher to test and establish causality. It also allows for greater control of variables, increasing the likelihood that it's the independent variable producing the effect. Third, it's relatively easy to replicate. The laboratory experiment gives high reliability. You can do the test again under the same conditions and see if you get the same results. So the laboratory experiment has major strengths and it's easy to see why it's so widely used in psychology. However, in practice, it also has certain weaknesses and limitations. And again, we can illustrate these with Bandura's experiment. First, even in a laboratory setting, it can be difficult to control for confounding variables. For example, there might be other factors, such as hormones influencing some children's behavior. Then there may be demand characteristics. For example, in Bandura's experiments, the children might have hit the doll just because that's what they thought the adults wanted them to do. Another major limitation is the lack of ecological validity in laboratory experiments. For example, there's no way of knowing for sure if the children in Bandura's experiment would have actually been aggressive in real life. So these are some of the things you should bring in to a good answer on laboratory experiments. But if you want to go the extra yard from a good to a very good answer, then maybe think about evaluating the evaluation points. Take demand characteristics, for example. This is an important limitation, but it doesn't apply to all laboratory experiments. Ellen McGuire hypothesized and found that London taxi drivers had redistribution of grey matter in their hippocampi due to their constant navigation. But they hadn't enlarged that part of the brain just to please McGuire, so demand characteristics wasn't a factor here. Similarly, lack of ecological validity needn't compromise the findings of all laboratory experiments. For example, tests demonstrating the Stroop effect aren't compromised because they're done in the laboratory, as you'll get exactly the same results in the real world. So, let's summarize. Preparing for questions on laboratory experiments. First, know what the experimental method is, and talk the talk, and use the correct terms. 
Illustrate your answers with real experiments and know the main strengths and limitations of laboratory experiments. Do this well and you'll do fine. But to go from a B to an A grade, you'll also need to go that bit further and show you also know that the limitations don't apply in the same way to all experimental studies. And if you found these shortcuts to psychological revision helpful and would like to see more revision clips on methods and other topics, then go to shortcutstv.com.